If you have chronic pain, there are only three types of pain. So if you wanna know why you're in pain, this video is going to explain it. Now this is part of a series, so if you haven't watched the first video on normal pain neuroscience, you might wanna watch that first. In the scientific literature, we describe three different types of pain. There are only three. We have nociceptive, neuropathic, and nociplastic. Nociceptive is what most people think of when they think of pain. They think of damage or inflammation. I think septive for sensation. Neuropathic, neuro meaning nerve, is true nerve pain. True nerve pain is very rare. And lastly, we have nociplastic, which is plastic changes or neuroplasticity in the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves that leads to abnormal processing of signals. Two really important things about nociplastic pain. One, if you have chronic pain, you have nociplastic changes. Two, that does not mean that pain is just in your brain. I'll explain this shortly. It's important to know that you could have one or two or all three types of pain and that that's changing over time. So everybody's mix of these causes is gonna be a little bit different. Some people are gonna be very nociplastic with a little nociceptive. Some people have true neuropathic pain with some nociplastic changes and so on. But it's important to know that if you have chronic pain, meaning your pain has lasted more than three months, you always will have nociplastic changes always. And that's because the further away from the initial onset of pain that we get, the less nociceptive and neuropathic we get, the more nociplastic we get. And that's because in the beginning, you may have actually damaged a tissue. You might've torn something or herniated something, but over time, your body will heal those tissues and over time, the pain is less and less due to tissue damage and more and more due to plastic changes in the nervous system. Hey, welcome. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Anthony Davis. I empower people with chronic back pain and sciatica to reclaim the active life that they love. If you ever want more one-on-one -on -one support, you can always watch the masterclass in the description and book a call to see if we can help. So we've got three types of pain. How do you know which one or ones are causing your pain? Well, let's start with nociceptive. Nociceptive is damage in the body. For example, you touch a hot kettle or touch a hot stove, so receptors in your hand sense the damage and they send a message through the spinal cord to the brain and tell the brain, hey, there's damage and therefore damage turns into pain. This is the least common type of pain in chronic pain, but it is the most common type of pain if you just recently injured yourself. So how do you know if you have nociceptive pain? Well, first of all, your pain will have started immediately after doing something that clearly caused an injury, like touching a hot stove. So we have a plausible mechanism for an injury or actual tissue damage. Next, that pain is probably going to be localized into one specific region. In the case of touching the hot stove, if you have pain on your fingertips, that makes sense. But if you're starting to have elbow pain after touching a hot stove, that elbow pain is definitely not caused by tissue damage. Next, the pain will quickly go away or at least diminish after the initial injury or provocative factor has gone away. In other words, it's going to hurt the most when you're touching the hot stove, but as soon as you take your hand away, yes, you'll have some aching pain for a while, but it's gonna be a short duration of time. It might be a couple of minutes, it might be a couple of days, but the pain is gonna go away pretty quick. Next, the pain is predictable. So if there is tissue damage, for example, I have a sunburn on my skin. Well, every time that I take a hot shower or put a shirt on and rub against my own sunburnt skin, it will predictably cause the same type of pain every single time I do the same thing. And lastly, the pain will start to resolve as the tissue heals. After you burn your hand on the hot stove, it should take about a week, and as long as it wasn't a serious burn, the pain should go away. And that's because we have this acute inflammatory cycle that happens when you damage your tissue, your immune system, all of your white blood cells are sending all of these cytokines and chemical messengers and sensitizing the tissue. So we're going to have swelling, redness, heat, and obviously pain as a result of these things. But as soon as the immune system does its job, heals the tissue, the pain should go away. Now this acute inflammatory 
inflammatory cycle usually lasts for a few days, sometimes it can last for a few weeks while your body is under construction and your body is working to repair those damaged tissues. Now, disc herniations are a special case with regards to healing because legitimately the healing time for a disc could be anywhere up to one to even two years for a disc to heal. But here's the really important thing to understand about disc herniations is that even if the disc never heals, the acute inflammatory cycle has gone away after three months and it is no longer likely that the disc herniation itself is responsible for the pain. So even with a disc herniation that never goes away, you are still very likely to have a lot of nociceptive and neuropathic pain in the beginning. And the longer that the pain goes on, the less it's about tissue damage and the more it is nociplastic, meaning neuroplastic changes in the nervous system and not due to the disc herniation. Again, even if the disc herniation never heals, the longer that your pain goes on, the more likely that the pain has nothing to do with the disc. How else do you know that it's nociceptive pain? Well, nociceptive pain is very predictable and it is immediate. For example, every single time that you bend your spine, you get the exact same pain always. It's not, oh, well, today it felt fine, and then tomorrow it felt like it spasmed like crazy, and I don't know what's causing it. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. That is not nociceptive pain. Nociceptive pain has tissue damage, which means every single time you irritate that tissue in the same way, it will always respond in the same way. And again, it will follow a typical trajectory where it's really sensitive after the initial injury, and day by day, it should get less and less intense, and it should go away within days or at least within weeks. Next up, neuropathic pain. This is true nerve pain. A lot of people are worried about sciatica due to a true disc herniation with true nerve compression. I say true because a lot of people think they have neuropathic pain, but they do not. So let me give you some examples of neuropathic pain, which is true nerve damage. This would be a present in something like multiple sclerosis, right? Your nerves have an autoimmune condition. That really actually causes neuropathic pain. Or a diabetic neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, or Lyme disease, right? These are all legitimate nerve damage conditions, some of these being autoimmune, some of these infectious, some of these metabolic, but regardless, the nerves are undergoing some type of real damage. As for disc herniations, we have one situation that causes real nerve damage, and that is a lumbar radiculopathy or we could have severe things like cauda equina syndrome, but for most people, um, we're gonna deal with lumbar radiculopathy, which most people call sciatica, but sciatica is not the same thing. So if you have pain down the leg, that does not mean that you have true nerve compression because true nerve compression is very rare and it has really telltale signs. So let's be clear, sciatica is a catch-all term. A lot of people have pain that radiates from the back down into the hip, and maybe you have some blotchy patches of numbness, tingling, pain, burning, electrical sensations, itching, whatever. And so you might have some pain that kind of radiates into the glute and a little down the thigh. Usually it does not go past the knee. So if it does not go past the knee, almost certainly you do not have true nerve compression. But you may still have little patches, like you know maybe a little patch in the calf or the shin or something like that, that are just a little funny, but they're not consistent. It's like sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. That is not nerve compression. That is what we would call referred pain. And referred pain is either nociceptive or nociplastic. More likely, the, if it's gone on for more than three months, it's most likely nociplastic, which is why I painted this in blue, which is the color I've been using for nociplastic. Now, a radiculopathy has telltale symptoms. I'll get to those in a second, but the important thing here is somatic referred pain. It's blotchy, it's patchy, it's kind of wide and diffuse. It usually doesn't go past the knee, and if it does, it's inconsistent, it's patchy. This is not true nerve compression. But a pinched nerve, a true lumbar radiculopathy is lancinating, shooting pain, a tight narrow band down the leg and probably into the foot. So if you have a disc herniation that is truly compressing the nerve, you probably are going to have lancinating shooting pain down into the leg. So research shows us that there are basically four telltale signs that you have actual nerve compression. Number one, your pain is a shooting band, a tight band that goes 
from the back into the glute, down the hamstring. Maybe it wraps around the leg a little bit to the front of the shin, goes into the big toe. Whatever it is, it's a narrow band that goes down the leg, probably into the foot. In other words, if your pain kind of spreads out, it's probably not nerve pain. Next, loss of strength in the foot. Okay, partial paralysis of the foot, we call this foot drop. If you've been to a doctor already, they would have tested your muscle strength in your feet, and if they did not find any discrepancies, then you do not have foot drop. Next, again, your doctor would have had to do this, but testing your reflexes. We see losses in deep tendon reflexes. And lastly, loss of sensation, meaning numbness, true numbness. Beyond that, neuropathic pain will be immediate as soon as you do a movement or a position that compresses the nerve more, you will immediately, or at least within a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds at most, you should start to clearly notice that these radicular symptoms or radiating symptoms are immediately produced by and repeatable by certain movements and positions. Okay, so it is immediate, it is not delayed, it doesn't happen tomorrow or the next day, it happens immediately and it's reproducible. You can reproduce the same pain every single time you do a particular position. It is consistent. It is not, it's not here and then it's there and then it's up and then it's down and it's the front and then it's the back and then it's up and it's, you know, it is consistent and it is anatomically plausible, meaning the exact distribution of the nerve, the quote unquote nerve symptoms, possibly nerve symptoms, are also consistent exactly with the MRI findings of the disc herniation at the level and on the correct side. So if the MRI does not match the clinical picture, then it is not neuropathic pain. So if you're getting the picture, neuropathic pain is rare. Some of you will definitely have some neuropathic pain and we should obviously work around that, but most of you don't actually have neuropathic pain, even if you think you do. So this tells you how to figure it out. Which brings me to my last point, which is, plastic pain. Every single person watching this, if you have chronic pain, you have plastic pain. So is neuroplasticity just in the brain? Or am I telling you that your pain is in your brain? Kind of. I want to be really specific. It's not, I mean, yes, it's in the brain kind of in the sense that you have neurons in your brain and neurons have synapses, but it's really more about the synapses and you have synapses everywhere. You have them in, in your entire body, spinal cord, and brain. So it's not unique to the brain. It's a full body nervous system issue. And there are physical changes that occur in the synapses and in the receptors that I will explain in a future video. But the point is, there are physical changes. Your pain is real. You have real pain. It has a real cause, but there is no damage. In other words, this is a software issue, not a hardware issue. This is a communication of the nerves issue, not an anatomical disc herniation compressing on a nerve issue or a torn muscle or a joint that's out of place or your weak core. These are all physical issues that are not the problem. It's a software issue. So what do we need to do? We need to update the software. So let me know in the comments, What's your mix? After watching this and understanding the three types of pain, what do you think is going on for you? Let's review. So we have nociceptive pain, which is damage or inflammation, neuropathic pain, meaning nerve pain, which is rare, nociplastic pain, which is always present in chronic pain, and it is due to neuroplastic changes everywhere in the nervous system. And if we compare and contrast these, the cause of nociceptive will be acute damage and inflammation for neuropathic, it's a true nerve injury. For neuroplastic, it's neuroplastic changes in the signaling between neurons and synapses. How long do they last? Nociceptive pain, damage really only lasts for a few days, maybe a few weeks. True nerve pain, first of all, most of the time it goes away within about 12 weeks, but if it does become chronic, then you're looking at maybe 12 to 24 months for a full resolution of nerve symptoms. Nociplastic changes, these can just be ongoing. They are chronic by definition. How does each pain start? Nociceptive pain usually starts immediately with certain movements predictably. Neuropathic pain, nerve pain, true nerve pain is also immediate 
with certain predictable movements every single time. By the way, I'm speaking in absolutes. I say every time, but it could be eight out of 10 times. It's it's very reproducible. It doesn't have to be 100%. And nociplastic changes are delayed. They're unpredictable. It's sometimes hard to get a read on what's causing it. Was it this exercise or this other exercise? Or maybe it's not exercise at all, but lifestyle factors. And what type of symptoms are we going to see with each one of these? Well, nociceptive pain is probably going to be very local, focal, consistent, and reproducible. Neuropathic pain, true nerve pain, is going to be a narrow band down the entire leg past the knee. Probably you're going to have numbness, maybe some foot weakness, maybe Maybe you have poor uh, tendon reflexes, but again, it should be anatomically plausible. And nociplastic changes will usually produce hypersensitivity, so everything is way too sensitive, way more sensitive than it should be, even to gentle things. It's diffuse pain usually. It's usually not a tight band. It's usually kind of more widespread or you know spread out. Um, it is unpredictable. We can't get a read on what's causing it and what pro- what makes it feel better, what feels uh, makes it feel worse, and it's going to change over time to maybe it's a little bit here one day and then it's a little bit more over here another day. It's not exactly consistent. And even if it is consistent in the type of pain and location of the pain, it's still going to follow these other rules. That is, it's chronic, it's delayed, it's unpredictable, it's spread out, etc. So because nociplastic pain is the common denominator for chronic pain, that everybody will always have nociplastic pain, I'm going to spend a lot of time explaining exactly the the neuroanatomy of how nociplastic pain happens. But for now, remember, it is always real pain and it has a real cause even if there is no damage. But before we dive into the complex neuroanatomy to explain that, I need you to understand how chronic pain lives in the entire body. We cannot pinpoint it just to one particular tissue, and the act of trying to pinpoint one single tiny little thing that's causing your pain is the reason why it's so frustrating trying to fix chronic pain. That's because if we don't understand the real cause of pain, we're going to be chasing our own tail in rehab purgatory forever doing things that are useless, like trying to fix your posture fix your alignment, fix your core stability. These things have nothing to do with pain. And once you understand that chronic pain is a body-wide issue, light bulbs are going to go off and it will all start to click. So I will see you in the next video.